Hello, and welcome to the Corrective Exercise Specialization sec Chapter 5 section for activation techniques. This chapter, more specifically, is going to start referring to the isolated strengthening component of the NASA material here. Your previous sets were based off of more stretching and foam rolling techniques. So this is going to be your first stage in that corrective process to be able to take individuals, clients, athletes from the, you know, getting them going from the stretching perspective and then more of that myofascial release perspective and now moving them into the movement stages. Now, is this dynamic in nature? Yes, but is it truly dynamic with movement? It's not necessarily that. We're talking more isolated strengthening, so isolation of specific joints and focusing more on the eccentric component of everything. So let's let's start popping through our material here. Really take us on this adventure into this activation technique stage. Definitely something that you will use very regularly. Eccentric eccentric exercise is actually a very very important process in the strengthening of muscles but again it's isolated so it's a little bit different than the dynamic movement that we would see so let's let's pop in so there's your inhibit that's more of your self myofascial release aka foam rolling there's your stage two which is your lengthening techniques which is more of that stretching component that we see um, versus the myofascial release and then now like it says here isolated strengthening or the activation phase before we get into the integrated phase which is phase four which is the next chapter which is more about the dynamic movement versus the isolated movement that we're going to talk about so with activation what are we referring to isolated strengthening all right and with that isolated strengthening we are referring to Isolated strengthening and relationship with underactive muscles. Now, remember, overactive muscles, those are muscles that we need to stretch or release, whereas underactive muscles, those are muscles that need to be strengthened, all right? What are we looking for regarding that? Here's two, besides isolated strengthening, besides the term underactive muscles, there are two other main points that we really want to focus in on. And that's where the scientific rationale component is. Intramuscular coordination. Intra, meaning within, not inter, which is between two, all right? But intramuscular coordination, the coordinated effort of muscles and nerves to now start to focus their attention together to be able to work as a quality unit so that it can then strengthen muscles accordingly, okay? So... When we're referring to all of this, we want to avoid what we call synergistic dominance. And by having int better intramuscular coordination, we can avoid synergists per se. You know, synergists meaning the those muscles that assist in helping to make things um, move correctly. If synergistic dominance occurs, that means that the prime movers or the main muscles are not working in that effort. OK, so we have to be aware of that and we have to make sure that we can avoid that at all costs. So kind of going to be going through the same process of what we just talked about, just in their words, like it says here, use to isolate particular muscles to increase force production, increasing force, being able to move more weight. OK, now we're going to talk about you should have already, you know, in your own studies, you should have known about concentric isometric and eccentric muscles but muscle actions but here's just a quick little synopsis concentric that's the shortening that's the main motion that most people consider for your joint action so concentric like a bicep curl taking and lifting that weight through the full range of motion is concentric isometric is that pause motion at the very top of that lift and then eccentric is the return or lengthening phase okay um, so with intramuscular coordination by using concentric, isometric, and eccentric actions, we can help to improve or increase intramuscular coordination. Okay. What happens with that? Here's again, highlighted terms that we want to pay attention to. We want to enhance 
a combination of motor unit activation, synchronization, and firing rate. Motor unit activation, you are now activating or enhancing a better rate of muscle nerve connections. Through that, well, through those enhanced motor unit activations, you can then work on increasing the synchronization or coordinating efforts of the muscle the muscles themselves and the nerves that are associated with them. Also, the firing rate, the faster we can have or the more enhanced our firing rate, the better off the coordination can be, the better off the activation can be. It just depends on what you're looking to do. So, you know, your muscles are going to call upon nerves and specific muscle fibers. Well, that's great, but do we want to call on all of them at one time? Do we want to make sure that, you know, there is a good range? Because we know that as things become more intensified, more weight is being lifted or, you know, more effort is being put out, we start off with a specified amount of muscle fibers that start working. And then as it becomes more challenging, your body knows how to, you know, break that down. But it also understands how to push more nerve conductions out to the muscles to then improve that firing rate to then allow for more weight to be moved or more eccentric force to be put out. Maybe if it's a slower tempo, it takes more effort. So that means the firing rate can change. So all this is necessary so that we can increase muscle activation. That's really the main step here. We need to make sure we have isolated strength before we can go into dynamic movement. And that's why we do this activation technique before we move into our last and final set, which if we go back, just to remember, is your integrate phase, which is phase four down at the bottom, okay? So I said this before, and we talked a little bit about it previously in the introductory slide, but we have eccentric phase. Now we said in the previous slide, that there's concentric, isometric, and eccentric. Well, the eccentric component is very, very important for, as it says here, playing a key role in recovery of muscle injury, tendinopathies, decreases in muscle strains, and even immunochemistry, okay? Eccentric training, very, very important, very underutilized by many, but has become more prevalent recently all right not to say that eccentric phases of training have never been used but it's become very important in the physical therapy realm in the chiropractic realm in the strength and conditioning realm and the athletic training realm all of these realms are putting this information together and realizing you know what we're missing a very large component of what we need to be doing so therefore we need to make sure that we are using eccentric muscle contractions um, to be able to create that isolated strength, obviously incorporating both concentric and isometric as well. So the, the, the gist of it here is that e we need to use eccentric training. Don't solely think of concentric or just regular, you know, isolated strengthening through like the, the main movement. We have to think about the return phase to be able to justify that it's going to work in a correct manner. Lastly, if you look at the very bottom, there is a lot of evidence, a lot of research that indicates that eccentric exercise on one side, unilateral, can help increase the strength of the contralateral muscles. So basically what happens is you can end up with a, what we want to call a mirror effect of if you work the right side of the body, you can actually increase the strength of the left side of the body through a mirror effect. The nervous system through, you know, basically the general movement practice is what we're saying is that if you work the right side, your body understands that the left side can do the same thing. And so what it can do is through the motions provided on the right side, it'll stimulate the left side. And then when you go to do that, you can actually have a good counter one, two punch when you go to do the left side. All right, so if you had an injured side, by doing single-sided training, what can end up happening is you can actually get that mirror effect and the strengthening can start to occur because of that nervous system pattern. 
that's kind of interesting because if we go back to the last slide, what did we talk about? Intramuscular coordination, motor unit activation that envir involves nerves, synchronization involves nerves, firing rate involves nerves. All of these things are going to be very important because the nervous system is just as valuable as the muscular system. That's why we always talk about the neuromuscular system. They work in conjunction with each other to improve all around. So what do we got to be careful of though? We got to be very careful of special populations when we're doing isolated strengthening, all right? Specific, pop specific populations or of special populations can become more challenged with eccentric training and that can become a problem. Same thing with neuro neuromuscular disorders and those who still lack poor stabilization strength. All of those, you know, so what does that mean? We have to make sure that we're, you know, core stabilization strength needs to be enhanced and, and then followed directly up by isolated strengthening or in conjunction with each other to enhance them both. But they need to be done, but that's a precaution. Contraindications, things that you have to be aware of that people should or should not be doing based on their symptoms, acute injuries or muscle strains or tears, you know, those areas need to be paid. You have to know the background of that person to make sure that if an injury or a strain or tear has occurred, we, we can't work on that isolated strengthening yet. Acute rheumatoid arthritis of that affected joint that can cause a flare up. It can cause changes in movement patterns. It can cause the actual degrees that a person can move through ranges of motion. Another impaired joint motion. Even if you're working with a bodybuilder, okay, and we know, just say you have a, a bodybuilder with a large chest, large pec area, but they also have a, a, they were actually caused an injury via their training. Here's what I found. So what we need to understand is that those individuals are, their, their joint motions are actually impaired because of the large amount of muscle mass that they go through. And because of that, we can have massive problems with how they feel. So therefore, our job is to make sure that we can get them through as full a range of motion as possible to get them to get back from that injury as soon as as soon as we can. But just understand their joint motion is very diminished because they, you know, their range of motion is not the same as a gymnast or even someone who just doesn't have as much muscle mass. All right. So just be aware. But obviously, injury can be part of that impaired joint motion, et cetera. And then if there's ever pain produced during the movement, especially if you're getting somebody who's post physical therapy or is still is doing concurrent, meaning they're doing physical therapy and they are doing, you know, corrective exercise because the PT is allowing it. So you just got to be very, very careful with that and know that it cannot happen. And if there is pain done. Okay. So there's guidelines here. I'm not going to get into depth here because I want you just, you can look at them. All right, so I'll just pause for a second, take a look. And then the one thing I do want to clarify, remember repetition duration or tempo. This is something that needs to be remembered. Four, two, one, four seconds of eccentric, two seconds of pause, and then one second of return. So what are we focusing, what are we focusing on? the eccentric component. So what I mean by return is it's a little bit backwards. Four, se four seconds of eccentric, four seconds of that unloading component, meaning the lengthening. So or, so that point there, it's, if you're doing a, go back to the bicep curl, it's the return phase, one, two, three, four, done, one, two, and then one, all right? And I think I'm, I, I misspoke previously. It's four, two, one, four eccentric, two concentric, one second pause. So it's one, two, three, four down, one, two up, one second pause, one, two, three, four, repeat, okay? That's the acute training variables. About. So I'm, I apologize for misspeaking there, but I forgot that it's a four, two, one is the eccentric concentric pause, okay? So it's a four second return phase or lengthening phase, two second concentric phase or the prime mover phase, and then one second of pause and then restart it again, okay? So again, here are some examples of everything. This is your foot and ankle examples. You can see here if you need to, 
you know, feel free to you know, pause here, look at these, understand these motions, okay? You need to understand these motions because these will probably be asked of you on your test. What would be a foot or ankle exercise that would be appropriate for isolated strengthening? And you would give one of these examples for the foot and ankle. See, see how we can start placing ourselves into some testing formatting. Hip and knee, there you go. All right, now we're starting to see, again, but it's isolated. It's isolated to that single, single joint area. Standing quadriceps, what you're doing is you're, you're extending. So all you're working on is the knee, but there's no movement. Standing gluteus medius, that's where you're just, you're doing leg raises to the lateral leg raises. But again, only working the hip. Okay, so we gotta be very clear on that. It's that, it's that movement and it's that one specific joint, okay? There's your abdominal region, or as we, we would also call your intrinsic core stabilizers. All right. Um, being very, this is going to be, again, we said if we go back really quick to the, um, oh, too far. If we, clients with poor core stabilization, we said if they have precautionary reasons for that, we want to do them. All right. And we want to make sure of that using these examples or others. But again, we don't want to have dynamic. We don't want to have multi-joint. We want to work with that single joint region so that we can help enhance and strengthen those particulars before we then move into the next phase. There's some more of the ab and intrinsics. Okay. And then just to kind of summarize this phase three, you know, we talked about, you know, activate the inhibited neuromyofascial tissues and then work on that isolated strengthening. We want to be able to get a higher amount of strengthening before we throw the phase four integrated training in because we want to make sure that the, in, the intramuscular coordination is there, the firing rate is there, the synchronization is there, and then we want to take that and move it to then the intermuscular coordination and refinement of our whole system, global movement patterns, okay? Intermuscular, between muscles. So we want to have that coordination through the full gambit. Okay. So this is again, uh, chapter five. All right. Phase three activation. It's basically getting onto the first stage of movement of the corrective exercise continuum. And then the next chapter would be phase four integrated training, which would revolve around more concise, more in integrated movement patterns that involve a lot more steps, but very, 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 very appropriate for that. All right. So again, you have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to me. You can always check on any of my socials. You can always send me an email that's associated with it. Um, there's other videos that will be coming out in the future here. So please, please feel free to use these for, you know, your studying habits, click and pause ask me a question. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But again, thank you for listening. I hope you found some of this information helpful with the breakdown of everything. And we'll hopefully see you again looking at some other videos. Have a great day.